I hear a number of keto and carnivore advocates talk about how, what, and when to eat, and the vast majority of what they say makes sense. But what if I were to tell you eating a proper human diet isn't good enough for optimal health? Please stick around for this video and I'll discuss what you can start doing today to have not only dietary soundness, but physical strength as well. Hi folks, in this video, which is part one of two, I want to discuss the concept of getting physically fit. Now, it doesn't matter whether or not you are 18 or 81, the fact is being strong is what we need to be. Now, I've recently been criticized by those who say strength training isn't necessary for good health. Well, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree, at least within a certain framework. Now, if you do heavy labor, work a nice piece of property, for example, and get good, vigorous exercise requiring both strength and endurance, then I'm really not talking to you. But if you're like the average person, especially here in the United States, that is the sick, aging phenotype, then you're probably not moving as much as you should be. According to the US CDC, nearly 42% of Americans are clinically obese. Now, okay, I get it, it's the CDC, but we'll use those numbers anyway, okay? Now, Dr. Larry Tucker, a professor of exercise at Brigham Young University stated, in roughly 20 years, the prevalence of obesity increased by approximately 40% and severe obesity doubled. Now those numbers should alarm you. And although diet is a good indicator of good health and lifespan and can get you on the right track of getting out of being obese, the other side of that coin is being physically fit that is strong, which in turn sets the stage for good mental health. And I'll talk about that in a future video. Now, <clears throat> in general, there are five major determinants that promote good health span and lifespan. And these are diet, muscle mass, muscle strength, flexibility, and bone density. Now, good nutrition appears to be obvious, right? And those of you who are visiting this space are on the right track, you have a pretty good handle on what you need to do. But what about the other areas? As we age, muscle mass decreases, especially after 50 for men and after menopause for women. And therefore, strength begins to fail. At a certain point, we begin to experience sarcopenia, which is an actual loss of muscle tissue, as well as atrophy, which is a loss of size. In addition, sedentary lifestyles lead to a loss of flexibility, not to mention we're already fighting the issue of getting older and this rubber band flexibility that we had as kids begins to diminish, if not goes away altogether. Furthermore, aging brings about loss of bone density. And even though you might follow a good diet, the bones are gonna get weaker, often leading to osteopenia or osteoporosis if you're not putting a stress on them. Remember, these are the body's levers, okay? So they've gotta be in motion. All of these issues I just mentioned are reversible or preventable. And that is by training for strength and endurance. And guess what? Anyone can do it. The secret here, folks, is resistance training. Whether you're doing light weights, push-ups, heavy squats, and deadlifts, or whatever, the key is to do something to make your muscles work. In turn, the connective tissues will strengthen, as well as those body's levers, you know, the bones, okay? Now, you've likely been told, and I've heard this, I heard it for 30 years by certain groups of people, all you have to do is walk. That's nonsense. Although walking is a great exercise, provided you do it long enough, and that's different for everyone, it doesn't bring the body to a requirement whereby you must stress it, make it recover, and then realize an adaptation. Endurance training doesn't do this in the same way strength training does. Now, ideally, you'll be doing both, and strength training can do that more efficiently than, for example, running can. 
you know, oftentimes we say we need to run to get faster, but you know, that's not really true. How do you get faster? You get faster by getting stronger. You become a better runner by practicing how to run. For example, world-class sprinters. The reason they are so fast is yes, they practice running, but they train for strength. They are extremely strong. They have explosive capability. And that's what we're shooting for insofar as it's possible for our particular uh, anthropometry, our age, uh, any disabilities we might have, and so forth. Now, the fitness industry, very much like the food industry, hasn't been honest when it comes to the need, for example, for cardio training. You know, it's kind of like giving you the food pyramid and say you have to eat all these carbohydrates. Well, the fitness industry is saying, you've got to do all this cardio. You need to take that with a grain of salt because the fitness industry is big business. And like I typically do, I say, follow the money. The best kind of strength exercises you can do are those that will engage compound muscle groups. And when you put them under a significant stress, you are going to be exercising your heart. So there's your cardio. If you still want to do the long, slow distance things, by all means, knock yourself out. Now, within this strength idea, strength training idea, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to the gym and lift weights although I'm gonna suggest you lift weights, but you don't have to do 20, 30 different kinds of exercises, okay? We're not talking about bodybuilding here. We're talking about strength training. And the four main exercises that fit the description of compound movements that engage muscles, connective tissue, bones, and exercise the heart, um, and you can do them at no matter age, no matter what age and get stronger are the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, and the overhead press. These four exercises bring into play every muscle group and when done both properly and at the prescribed stress level with adequate recovery, the body will adapt and get stronger. In so doing, you take huge steps in increasing your muscle mass, which in turn increases your strength. Furthermore, comes flexibility, and guess what? A body under stress, putting weight on it, will increase the bone density. It has to, if you're gonna bear that much weight. Now, again, does this mean you have to stop your walking, your jogging, or your cycling, for example? Absolutely not. In fact, those activities, when done at a low intensity, are fantastic on recovery days. Now, all the while, it's imperative you keep your diet as clean as you can, eating the right things for what works best for you. It's clear you're gonna need ample amounts of protein and fat, but contrary to popular belief, you don't require any exogenous carbohydrates, even for strength training. Now, that doesn't mean you can't take some, uh, if you want a little bit, maybe eat a little bit here and there to replenish your glycogen stores in the muscles, but it's not necessary. It all depends on what you're trying to do. If you're really trying to bulk up, yeah, then maybe. If you're just wanting to get stronger to a certain point such that it works at your particular height, weight, and age, you're not going to need to do all that. Now, I'm going to talk more about the various training prescriptions in the next video based upon the generic ideas of beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So please watch for that video. It'll air on Monday. But in the meantime, what can you do? Well, if you're new to strength training, you can do air squats, for example, and those are deep knee bends, or push-ups. Okay, so perhaps you can't do a push-up on the floor, but maybe you can lean up on a counter and do a push-up, maybe against the wall. Do something to move that body. Get the juices flowing, if you will. These two exercises are compound movements that will get your body accustomed to and ready for increased stress, that is the resistance. And if you already have some experience with lifting, for example, then perhaps, or perhaps you've been sloughing off, well, maybe it's time to get back in the gym and 
Get your body strong again. Get it back to the maximum potential you can realize where you are in this walk of life. And despite what you have heard, resistance is not futile. Okay? Now before you go, I'm going to ask you to please like this video, share it with somebody you know, hit that notification bell, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel. Until next time, I'm Dr. Alan Davis, wishing above all things that you might prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Take care and be strong.